Hi, I'm Peggy Farron, and we are live with the Understand Photography Show, where we talk about travel, nature, and fine art photography. Welcome to episode 114. We're going to talk to Michael Joseph, who is an art representative. So if you want to learn more about the business of selling your photography, then tune in for this show. However, before we do that, be sure to go to our website, understandphotography.com, and sign up for some of our free stuff. The latest thing that we put online was 30 unique and practical gifts for photographers. So if you want to make your Christmas list or if you want to buy something for your, for your uh, photographer friend, then check out that download. It's at understandphotography.com. We also have other free things on there as well. Remember, the Understand Photography Show is broadcast live on Facebook at 4 p.m. at facebook.com slash understandphotography. Then we put it on YouTube on Saturdays and also is a podcast on Saturdays. If you listen to podcasts on iTunes, boy, would we appreciate a review. It helps us come up in the search engines. It's really, really helpful. So our guest today is fine art photographer Michael Joseph, who has a very interesting story. He creates amazing images of cityscapes, uses film, and he's shown in galleries, he's fe featured in magazines. So we're going to talk a little bit about that, but also about the business of art in general. So, general, so welcome, Michael. Thank you for having me. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here today. Um, so I appreciate your listening and viewing audience for tuning in today, and hopefully we have some wonderful tips and information for them that can propel their careers forward. That's awesome. So now you have a really unique style. What, what do you think helps set your work apart? Uh, it's an easy answer for me. The, the thing that uh, maybe set me apart from other photographers or even today as I'm still photographing and traveling is it has to come from the heart. You have to be very passionate about what you're doing and your subject, your photography. And if, if that remains true and you have consistency and a body of work, you'll stand out. I think uh, if you try to be everything to everybody, you'll come up a little bit short. I found out early in my career that that's nearly impossible to do. So, um, you know, I, I don't think you have to be pigeonholed into one specific subject or genre, but um, my career is fine art photography, and I just sort of found a natural niche for myself that, um, and I filled in a little bit of a gap, a little bit of a void where I saw, hmm, I could be that guy. And, and it was sincere work. I really loved and I was very passionate about what, what I was photographing. Now what is your work? Cityscapes, uh, structures, um, buildings, bridges. It's urban landscape, if you will. Okay. And um, that was just innate in me from I was a little child. Uh, I just, you know, the first time that I, I, I looked through a camera, or even before that, through a Fisher Price uh, Play School viewfinder with the, <laughs> with the slides going through. And most of your audience may be a little bit young and doesn't remember that, but uh, let's just stick with a 35 millimeter camera. Uh, that's what I worked with and still have worked with. And um, traveling uh, was something that was very innate to me. Um, it was inside me that I wanted to travel and go in to be an explorer and an adventurer. And uh, so the two were a perfect combination together, traveling and photography. Ah. So, yeah. Now you're a film photographer. Yes. And what, why? Why are you a film photographer? <laughs> That's easy and uh, it's no real big secret, but I'll share that with your, your audience today. Uh, I'm very, very fortunate and very blessed today. You know this on the way here today. Um, I was driven here by my father. So my dad's in the studio today. Um, God bless him, 81 years old. The guy's uh, still uh, surprising me every day, you know. And it was his camera that I borrowed um, to make my first introduction in photo into photography. So um, it just by happenstance, uh, that, that's what it was. It was a 35 millimeter um, Canon AE-1. So if anybody Googling right now, look that up. It's a very, very manual camera. It was the best equipment in the day when my, my dad first acquired the camera. Um, you know, he always had to have the best of the best. And he always taught me, if um, you invest in the best, you'll do your best work. The best work will come out of you. And you'll, you'll never be, you'll have any regret or feel sorry or any excuses for why you didn't produce good work. So that was the so first why, tip today. How long, how long ago did you? Uh, 
was that? that I, I can remember, yeah, it was 1995. So um, why didn't you jump on the digital wave? 95 was uh, probably too premature oh, at the time. that was definitely too early. Too right? early, right. 2000, 2001, 2003. Correct. Uh, 2000 after, um, right, the digital age was upon us. The internet was here. It wasn't a, a fad or a trend, right? It was, right. It, was it was reality, the new reality. Um, I was a traditionalist in the sense of 35 millimeter photographer. I was trained in it. Um, I was immersed in it. I was enjoying the craft, uh -huh. uh, the discipline, if you will, that I liked everything about it. Not, not just uh, loading the camera and shooting uh, manually, setting the, the aperture and the shutter speed and all that, the technical aspect. I also liked the dark room. I like making the wet prints, the C prints, uh, producing those results um, tactile. It was uh, something. So you that just made a decision never to go digital. That's not true. I oh. did go digital. Uh, oh, we, were, oh. we were having a discussion earlier today uh, pro at my arrival, and uh, yeah, there was a transition to go to digital only about five years ago. My main body today is a. Uh, a, um, a Canon 7D. It's not even a 5D, so I'll be honest with your listeners today. It's, uh, that's the best of the best. I aspire to get that and I hope to get it someday. But my transition to digital came from another um, uh, individual that's very much like my f a father to me as well, is my wife's father, uh, Bob, uh, gifted me with the 7D. So I've been blessed twice. Ah. And I've taken that that camera to the into the future with me now and have produced some some really interesting work with that so uh, and okay. I still have my dad's camera it sits on the shelf at my house I love that camera oh wow yeah, so it's very special very magical we'll talk about magic today a little bit and uh, when we get to you know exploring more about the business of art all right I am gonna skip some things because I really want to get into the business okay now you've got a lot of images and museums and galleries in magazines thank you so yeah, yeah. so uh, how well, did that how did you get the attention of all these people okay how, well how did uh, that happen the, the reader's digest version right a, a, a short story we are limited on time today so the 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 the, the, the most important uh, aspect of this in, is that you have a strategy which I did um, it wasn't completely haphazard so that would be uh, a stretch of the imagination today. Oh, I was the luckiest guy. Luck did play a part, and it plays a very big part. Um, I, so in the beginning, um, you know, I was questioned by my father for a five-year business plan. He wanted to know where I was going, what I was doing, and how do I see this playing out. And uh, I thought that was great. And, I, and to this day, when we get to talking about you know, my other business today that I have with my wife, is I still use that. Um, criteria and guideline when I'm consulting with artists is that five-year five business plan or just try to have a, a strategic plan uh, something like I like to call like a road map right like coming here today I had to get on my maps and put in the address and figure out where I was going and where I was exiting to get into arrive where I wanted to be simple as that in in a career in art is no different um, it, you know sure you can you know uh, pray and hope and believe and many other things to, to, to maybe to aspire to get where you're going, but a, a, a strong strategic course, um, you will arrive. So um, let me tell you a little um, bit about how I got started. Uh, to that, I set out to do three things a day uh, for my career. Early on, uh, I was just a you know, humble street photographer, traveling different cities. There were no galleries, no museums no corporate collections, all the things that you spoke of, TVs, movies, that comes later. But in the beginning, um, I made it a, a, a principle. Okay. Uh, I made it something um, to do three things a day to my career. And that can be very simple things or very big things. I think if your audience is paying attention to what I'm saying, if you, if you realize a year from now, if you visualize where you want to be with your career, and you have 365 days to do it, right? Uh -huh. So I figured out that Hmm, if I just get up, and I, I didn't, I had a day job, um, and, but I knew that if I just concentrated on three things, a phone call, call a gallery, call somebody, look something up on the internet, read a book, uh, make some photographs, just try every day to do three things in your career to advance your career, you'll be amazed where you are at the end of the year. Now, part two of that, Peggy, I see you anticipating, is that the other most important thing is, is to set aside a dollar amount an investment into your career. You have to have 
a, a resource to advance your career. And let's just face it, it takes money, it takes a commitment. Right. Um, whatever that amount is, is, is relative and it's gonna be different to everyone, right? right. So my lifestyle at the, at the time permitted me to maybe save 10 or $20 a week that I could set aside towards my career. Now you have 50 something weeks a year, you set aside that, you compound that, that, that money, you realize, hey, I got five grand at the end of the year, what can I do with my career? And that's what I did. I invested smartly ah. into my career. So I diversified. I know it sounds like business to your audience, it but is literally business. it is business. <laughs> right. So, um, and this is also, also very, very key. I surrounded myself with the right individuals. This is not a, a gentleman that's sitting here talking to you today that it was me, me, me. It was all me. I'm so great. I'm the greatest photographer. Come on. Um, I'm, I always thought I was okay, but I was having a lot more fun at what I was doing, uh -huh. a lot more passion, but I knew if I was gonna take it seriously and advance it forward and it was some sort of a career or an individual that I could look at as a role model um, or maybe a mentor and model that, um, then the road was a lot smoother. I didn't have to blaze the trail. I just wanted to get on the right path to get to where I wanted to go. Okay, so, I, yeah, so I knew, how do you find how do these I do mentors? That? You, you, they're, they're all around us. Again, it could be someone like you know my father was to me, my wife is to me. It could be just uh, going down to a local gallery um, and making yourself available uh, to the gallery director, the gallery owner. I, I, and what do you I, mean by that? What do I mean by that? Um, I mean, as a real example, what I did for my career, um, I, I knew there was a gallery in town that was uh, on, a, on a nice boulevard like you have here in Naples, and I always visualized my artwork hanging in that window, right? I would drive by that street every day, and why is my artwork not in that window? Well, I wanted to figure out how to get that to happen. Well, it started by, uh, you know, I had a little bit of portfolio together. I had, I had my subject, um, I had my photographs, I had a nice presentation which I put together, which is very important that you know, we emphasize that here. There's not a haphazard to, to a portfolio review or a presentation. We are sticklers for doing your best work. I made quality prints, put them together in a nice binder, had a nice logo, a business card prepared, and I dressed uh, appropriately, and I called the gallery to make an appointment. I just didn't show up and knock on his door. Other people's time is very valuable. Yeah. And if you don't value theirs, they're not gonna value yours. Okay. So that's essential, um, that you conduct yourself as you would as the CEO of your company. Okay. That's the way I approached it. Look, I'm, I'm Michael Joseph Incorporated. I'm the boss of myself, or actually I work for my wife, so I'm, <laughs> she's, the, you know, she's the boss, I work for her. But I get up and I go to work. That's it, I have uh, you know, those disciplines in place to um, you know that, that work for me, and um, so you call them up and what call do you say? Up, call my gallery, call any gallery, and say find out who the director is. Do your homework also. You know, don't just go into it blindly. You know, do a little, take a few minutes, go on their website, read about them, uh, find out what their likes are, what they have, what their hobbies, what their interest is. Look, we have art in common, we have photography in common, but the the, the real secrets of success are that it's more important to click with people than it is the shutter, right? That's yeah. Alfred Eisenstadt. I mean, that, that's a quote from him. That I, I, I thought that that was really gonna be something that I, I needed to pay attention to. That okay. it's people, that we, we work together. And so when I would wanna go to a gallery or do anything in this business, I find out about the individual. I do a little bit of homework, find out what they're like, where they're, you know, what, you know, make a few uh, phone calls to break the ice, if you will. So Everything you doesn't have to be immediate. Everybody oh. wants immediate, right? Immediate mm -hmm. gratification, instant gratification. I, I kind of tend to slow down and pace myself. And again, it's strategy. If, if, uh, if it's like the, 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 the tortoise and the hare concept, right? I mean, who so won the let's race? go back to this okay. first gallery. What do you say when you call? Call and ask, uh, hi. I, I would like to speak to the gallery director or the individual um, that would uh, be willing to have a portfolio review with me okay. or a consultation. Can okay. I have 15 minutes of their time? Okay. Okay. So now, set it. if you know their name, is it better just Absolutely. to say, hey, yes. can I talk to Sally Smith? Of course. And, and, and it, I and would it, like to sit down and... Yeah. And it, and it always helps to, uh, that the, the icebreaker is that, um, that it, there, there's key words that if I hear something in that introduction that lets me know, hey, this person did their homework, they know a little bit of something about me. I'm less on guard, I'm more relaxed, 
and, and more in a position to be welcoming of them. I love to say yes a lot more times than I say no. Mm -hmm. So, but that's important to me. I, I, I don't think I have much patience or room for, for, for ignorance and arrogance. And I think you, you have to just slow down a little bit and take a deep breath and realize, look, we all want something out of life. We all want to have more, but there can be gatekeepers in your way. And those doors can be slammed and it can become very difficult. What, what, what I'm communicating today is the secret of my success, which I'm sharing with you, it, it's, it, it may not be that complicated or sound that complicated. It sounds very easy, but it's very truthful and being very honest with you. It was these kind of things that I understood um, you know, that, that helped me so you said, you, now let's go back to you said yeah. surrounding yourself with good people. Yeah. And one of them is a gallery owner or yes. more. Yes, or more, right. Because so, uh, my and you ask for these portfolio reviews yes. or consultations. And yes. a lot of people just say, very nice, but you're, we don't have room for you today. Or I've got, I've got a, a file cabinet full of rejections. Yeah. And so <laughs> but, you need, but you need only one door to open that can change your life, you know, my But how do these people become your mentors then, or do they? Or okay. they're just... Okay. Very easy. Okay. Um, be, it, it, it begins with uh, being a giver and not a taker. I think that in my, in my career and on my journey, uh, and I see this a lot in my gallery and so does my wife and, and the assistants that work with me, is that we, we understand that you want something from us. You want to, your art in our gallery and you right. want us to sell it. We, we already know that. But uh, again, it, it, it helps that in, in a very big way, that if you just um, set that aside for a moment and make it about the other person okay. in the beginning. And I think that helps greatly. Hi, Michael Joseph. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. I know so much about your career. I love the picture of the Brooklyn Bridge, da 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 da. How do I feel? I feel wonderful. I feel wonderful that this person knows me. They've taken their time out to learn a little bit about me. And it's, hey, Joey, come on over, sit down. Let's have a cup of coffee. What can I do to help you? That's okay. it. It's as simple as that. But you have to disarm. You, okay. you know, I think it's, it's just a little bit of uh, chivalry, politeness, cordialness. Uh, the, 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 the art business is not as scary as you think it is. It's scary if you're on the outside. It's controlled by a minority group of people, and I say minority by because a small group of people uh, make up a large portion of what's going on, what art is selling, what photography is being shown, because we all know each other. So if you can, if you can break that barrier, so how you're else in. can you break into that world? You, you, you break in by the course that I'm um, I'm talking about today. So now we're we're surrounding ourselves with key individuals. We have we have mentors, we have consultants, and we have people what, that are coaching us. How do you keep us. in touch with them, though? I mean, what do you well, like today? Say they, come on, social media, do you email, just text. Send them, so, I mean, yes. but do you just send them random emails? Or, no, nothing I random. Mean, everything calculated. I know, but I mean, like, yeah. I'm just thinking about my customers who want to sell their artwork. Yeah. They like they need a script on what to say. They don't know what to do. And then how do you follow up? Okay, so it's, oh, very nice Simple. stuff. But you know we're not looking for anybody right now. Okay. So then how do you continue that relationship? Simple, right? You you follow up. My dad used to always tell me you got to convert a no into a yes. That makes a good salesman, <laughs> a great salesman. So I was always a salesman of myself. And there's no better salesman for me than me. And, and I always believe that, and I still believe that. I mean, I ask other people to, to handle things for me, and they're doing things for me, they're selling for me, but I love when it's Michael Joseph selling for Michael Joseph. Um, so the follow-up, simple. You've made the phone call, you, you've got a, an appointment, you show up, you show up on time, you make a presentation, and it's gonna, and it's gonna give you a comprehensiveness about what you're doing, okay. your study. I wanna also interject that about you know, putting your portfolio down, and just letting somebody look at it, kind of remain quiet, let them look through it. You don't have to talk about every image or explain every image, okay? okay. Let them look and, and, and enjoy and read their face. Just watch their expressions, watch if they put their hands on an image. That'll tell you everything that you need to know, okay? There's also another axiom in business. The first person to speak loses, right? Uh -huh. So let them, let them go first. Don't have to just keep on impressing. Again, relax, lay back. So you've made the contact. They may be giving you a no or not right now. Follow up. Go immediately home or you know, give it an hour and follow up with an email. 
Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for seeing me today. Your time is valuable. I really appreciate it. Perhaps in the future okay. you can revisit and you can look at a new series of work. Maybe they've commented on the work and there's something that they suggested to you that you could do differently or be doing differently and you've done it and you want to go back to them and show them that okay. you've listened and that's done good. it. Yeah, very that's good. Very important. Okay. So those, and then of course you know send something in the mail, send something nice in the mail. Uh, you know a nice promo piece, a well printed postcard, a, a, a nice letter with your business card in it. Just reminders. I was always very very good with that kind of follow up, Peggy. Is that um, you know a, a no is just another uh, time for me to keep keep sending stuff okay. and staying in front of. Um, you know the people that I wanted to be in front of. All right. So your mm -hmm. first thing was you set your five-year business, or you made your business plan in general, and you said I'm going to do three things to advance me towards my selling my photography, which was your correct. Three yes. things a day. Three things a day. Some yes. things were tiny. Some, some things, things were big. Bigger. And when you missed a day and you didn't do anything, you just pick yourself up and do it the next day, right? Yeah, and I. I it's just like going on a diet because we bet. all go to all McDonald's every once yeah, in a every while. Once in a while. <laughs> um, the thing that I didn't mention go the next was, day that, was that, that was that I kept the journal. Oh. I wrote it down. I still have that book today. Wow. Yeah. That is fascinating. Write so, it down. That'll hold. That'll hold your feet to the fire. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, you did your three things a day. How did you come up with those three things? Like, what do you do? I mean, obviously, calling on the gallery owners is one thing. Yeah. But this is a problem for people just starting out. They have okay. no idea. Tips. Um, we'll go back to the question you asked, what, 15 minutes ago. How did I get to television, commercials, movies, corporate collections, museums? Uh, the way I got there was I compartmentalized um, those categories. So over here was uh, film, television, publication, media, and then there were galleries and museums, uh, corporate art collections. And I, I targeted those groups individually. So one day, uh, it, it, as a factual example, uh, and I was a novice on the internet 20 something years ago, believe me. I mean, this well, is a cathode ray <laughs> monitor, you know, 13 inches, and, you know, dial up was. Yeah, I remember so that. <laughs> I'm on the internet, and I'm just Googling corporate art consultants, Florida. Okay. Oh. And that was like, you know, one day's work or, or four hours at night while I'm having dinner in front of the television. Just, okay, you know, I mean, I had a day job, I'm being honest with you. I always kept a day job, never quit my day job. Um, and I had a, a job that was conducive to my career in most parts. But so that was one thing I could do. Go home for four hours, get on the internet, and it was a quick Google search, and I would just um, sift off the emails in the director's name or whoever the individual was in charge, and just send out emails one at a time. So you know. So you took the time to research them a little yes. bit before you formulated the email, so that it was a really good email, personalized to each Here person. Right. How am I doing? You're doing fabulous. <laughs> you're, you're taking notes. <laughs> but, but, let's see how it all comes together yes. now, right, dear yeah. Susie? You can't just put uh, a blanket no, email was, out hey, to everybody. No, I'm Michael Joseph. I would really. Uh, you know, be honored and, and uh, should you take an opportunity to look at and visit my, keep, I kept it short, a paragraph, that's it. Because let's face it, 15 seconds in an email, 15 seconds on a website, that's it. You're in, you're out. So I kept it very short and very concise. Introduced myself, gave them the link to my website, which I really used the primary uh, source for a portfolio review. I didn't do a lot of those walk-in gallery um, portfolio oh, reviews. Okay. And those were, by that time in the mid, uh, 95 to 2000, that was a little passe and antiquated. Everything was being done on the, in, on the internet. Mm -hmm. However, I'm just shooting film. Uh, that was my preference. But yeah. the way business in the, in the world was working was on the internet, right? So um, it didn't even require in-person visits and it didn't even require what we used to have to go through in the 70s and 80s were really making printed portfolios putting them in a box and sending them at $25, $30 a piece yeah. and never getting them back. You want right. to talk about an investment in your career. Thousands of dollars spent the old school way. So yeah. the new school is convenient. You're doing it in your jammies. You got your milk and cookies and you know, you're just emailing. Nobody has to know what you look like at that time or anything what you're doing. You know, you're, 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 you know, you're feeding the baby or whatever it is that you do, but you're, but you're still working. Again, that's when I talk about the discipline. I wasn't a slacker. I stuck to my discipline. So let's just say 
A hundred emails went out that night. You spent that many? Oh, of course. You got. To, let's do the math. I mean, if you're doing ten emails in, in you know an hour, or twenty emails in an hour, you spend four or five hours. So one hundred emails would only count for one thing. That's one thing. Oh wow, that's pretty impressive. Right. So that's and then and then maybe that afternoon, um, you know, I I I put uh, uh, some new images onto my website or I did something fresh to my website. Does that count as that's some, two? One of your, okay. Right. And then the third thing I might have done that day was went down to at the time a bookstore, Barnes and Nobles, and you know did some research about some other photographers or looked at some books or got some other information um, that I could use in my. Uh, I just yeah, sure. want to yes. say something about what you just said because what I see with the people that I know or who I know who really want to sell their art, yes. if they did those three things, they would spend time working on their website, time taking pictures, and time, you know, editing the pictures. Correct. Instead of any sales things. Where you spent a lot of time on sales things. Bing, bing. So right. maybe maybe the, the goal yeah. would be to do three things, three sales things a day, although to me, 100 emails would be 100 things. And I'm not even, and, 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 and my wife is sitting back at home right now listening to this going, and he's not exaggerating. I mean, that, wow. that, that's, you know, really I mean, my work ethic. Research, I mean, it was, just yeah. a research to come up with 100 Correct. would be a big job. For most people. Not most people, but I mean, it's 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 not hard if if what I said earlier, if you're passionate about what you want to do, and you really feel it in your belly, um, you know, in your gut, that you know this is what you want to do. Uh -huh. I mean, you have to move with confidence, and you have to move with conviction. It's it's lead, follow, and get out of the way. Yeah. So I mean, it's not going to be easy, right? So I mean, the real. The rewards are going to be great because so few succeed. So few want to do the work that I'm telling you that I did. No kidding. Okay, so I can't even imagine putting right. out a hundred emails in four yes, you hours. Can. Yes, you can. You're a worker. Not if you customize each one. It's it's customized to a Somewhat. degree. Somewhat, obviously, degree. I know. Right. A I have cut and paste, right? I no. have little folders right. in my Gmail like standard responses Simple. for this. Look, standard somebody, responses if, if for that. If you're that. listening today. And you're gonna and you're gonna email our company. At, you know, near the end of this conversation today, we're gonna give them some information and where they can go, what websites. If you're gonna email my company, simple. Dear Michael, I enjoyed listening to your your show, the interview with Peggy, um, and then just reference something that we had in common. Please look at my website and guarantee you that I will, and I and you will hear back from me. That's it. I answer all my email. Do you really? Yes, I do. Wow. I answer my own email. So. But uh, not everybody does. I, you and get, I, and I do that too. And I'm probably behind right now today, but I'm, I'm going to go home and I'm going to stay up tonight answering my email. <laughs> but I think, I think th those are the core principles of it. I mean, here, here, here's something, Peggy, that I can share with your audience as well. Look, um, I like to read. And I read biography and autobiography. And, and, and not just about photographers or artists. I like to read about athletes business people, chefs, I don't, I mean, I just want to hear their stories. And you yeah. know what? Successful people all have something in common. Yeah? They do. And? It's the way they think. Okay, I agree with that. That's it. Yeah, I'm reading and I'm looking for something. What is it they're doing? What is it that they're doing? How did they do that? How did they get there? How, how, how does, you know, that, that pro quarterback with two minutes to go throw those passes and score the winning touchdown for his team? or? of the team. And you know what? It's 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 that discipline, but I also figured out all the practice, everything. Yes, that that's relative, but it's the way he thinks. Yeah. Success, check it out. I mean, successful people have a uh, something in common about the way they think. I, I agree with that. And that and that's what So that's, you expect to succeed as part of it. You said it, not me, but yeah. I, I <laughs> Yeah, you, you if 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 you if if um I'm not going to get the quote right, but if, if, you, uh, if you think you can't, you can't, and if you think you can, you will. That was Henry Ford. And Henry Ford? Now you messed okay. it up. I don't remember. I don't remember. It was something like that. I'm just par <laughs> paraphrasing. We're full of quotes today. Let's, 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 so I'm, I'm, let's, let's go back a little bit. So we're, the, the movies happened. Uh, I talked about earlier about luck p playing a so part. So what is the movie? Okay, I don't so even know the, what the, the movies The movies, uh, uh, actually, they're. they're um, um, HBO shows. I'm, I'm, my work is featured in Dexter um, and um, Veep oh, with okay. Julia Dreyfus. Um, I, I know it's in those two shows. It's probably 
uh, dozens of other TV shows. And so um, set designers, is that who you call Set them designers are, are exactly right. It's the set coordinators, set designers um, that um, seek you out or... Um, and how did you get their attention? That's gr fascinating. Well, fascinating story, true story. Um, I had my day job, was working in a furniture consignment shop and I told you it was conducive to my career because I always kept some of my frame photography in the consignment shop. But I never actually hung it in the most predominant spot in, in the showroom. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a consignment shop where um, treasures and discoveries um, were most important. People were digging through and th okay. you know, antique roadshow, right? They thought they were going to find something. Uh -huh. So I would always just keep a couple of photographs on the floor in the back someplace and it was kind of just a, a joke to watch people rummage through and, oh, what are these black and whites? And, you know, and I would smile and, and just kind of be humble and coy about it. But that day I was out, my wife was filling in for me at the store. She calls me up at home and says, hey, there's somebody here. They don't want to buy the photographs, but they want to borrow them for uh, a set. They're shooting a pilot in Miami and they would, they would, they'll, they'll pay you to, to borrow them. Ah, oh, great, we'll go out to dinner, take the money. So <laughs> that's how, that's that's how, how actually Dexter happened. Uh, they called me back two months later. They told me the pilot was a hit. The show oh, was Oh, so being, Dexter was that? That's how Dexter happened. True story. Wow. Yeah. And, that's so yeah. cool. Luck, luck plays a, an important part. Was Dexter part. filmed in Te Miami? Dexter was filmed in Miami, yeah. Oh. It's been too many years ago to, that, I, I, you know, that I remember everybody's name to thank them, but uh, I thank them humbly today uh, in my but wife what? who's but listening. That is incredible. True story. Credi incredible credibility when you say, oh, my work was featured on Dexter. There's credibility to that, and you better pick up the ball and run with that, right? That, that's what also is important to you, Liz. When you, when you start having these, the, the foundation is laid, and you're, you're, you have building blocks for your career, and you're, you're, you're being calculative and strategic, right? You just don't build a, help, a house haphazard. Again, we're going to go back to blueprints, an architect, a design, a builder, a developer, and that is the formula. So if you're, you know, um, if you applying yourself and you're building these building blocks and you have something like that it's, that's success, successful for you, then that's to your fear advantage to promote that and market that so that you can garnish the attention of the next level. So of what did you do next after the next the thing we did after the Dexter is we probably sent out some sort of a you know promo email announcement or a blast. We maybe tuned into the to the the, the, the previews. Dexter won. Uh, many awards after that. We were um, um, honored with with some of the certificates for the awards for the recognition oh, of it. Cool. We, we promoted that. I kept using that, you know, not as as an egotistical thing. And again, very humbly, we just knew that that was a uh, a way that we could use that to oh, yeah, you know, you gotta get brag more about attention, your successes. Right? successes, right? Yeah. You, know, you don't win a, a Grammy or an Emmy and just. Go, ha ha, you know, you're, yeah, hey, you're, actress, you're now yeah. you're, you know, you got a few more dollars, so uh, zeros now, at the end of so your So when you say you price. promote it, yes. what do you mean by promote? Uh, uh, okay, at, so at this time, it's, it's, it's 2000, 2005, uh -huh. and, uh, you know, email blast um, and uh, social media was, you know, was, was, was Start, happening, yeah. just starting to happen. So I always kept a, a, a very... Um, concise email database. All those emails that I sent out, I kept them in a database. So later on, I had a big list of names that I could just push one button and send out an email announcement to a group email blast. Back in the day, I think we used to BCC, right? It was a blind copy to everybody. Yeah. Uh, that was the old school AOL and, and yeah. you know, uh, MSL, Microsoft had something, what were they? Um, but today, you know, Yahoo, and then you got, you know, uh, um, was one of the old ones. But today it's Gmail. There's excellent email programs today, uh, Constant Contacts, One Group Mail. There, there's several. Even right. with your website providers, they'll ask you if you want to, um, you know, rent or lease a virtual terminal, which we do. It gives us more space to send out more email. So it's sort of sophisticated in the background. But my database, conservatively, 50,000 names okay. in it okay. at this point. So I compartmentalized, right? Uh, galleries, licensing and publishing, corporate art consultants, des interior designers and decorators, which we haven't even talked about. Yeah. Though that, that group of individuals was the catalyst and the catapult for my career. Now, uh, this, is, this is an area that a light bulb went off where it wasn't just the um, individual art collector or fine art photography collector who's 
gonna put it into their collection or put it in their home and they're, they're just, right, you know, right. a, a one-off, I call that. Um, it, I found out quickly who buys art in bulk and in mass and who buys it, who's, who's paid to buy artwork? Yeah. Interior designers and corporate art consultants. The corporate art consultants, uh, they're the ones that are responsible for putting art in the hotels, right. restaurant chains, cruise right. ships, corporate offices. Uh, my work is held in probably conservatively over 50, 60 Fortune 500 companies. Okay. So, um, without so getting me into naming the, names, you know, General that Electric was through, and that was through the corporate art. Those are the corporate art collect, collect uh, consign it, uh, consigners and dealers that are seeking out individuals. They're resourcing art or sourcing art. They have a project in mind. They know what their interior design looks like, and now they have to fill the walls, and they're paid usually about a one or two percent of the budget for art. Okay. And you're talking about building a multi, multi-million, billion dollar facility. You know, yeah. a million dollars for art is, 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 is a nice payout. Yeah. So if you're getting one percent of that million dollars for the project, those are the kind of numbers that I'm working with. Okay. So uh, Morgan, Morgan Stanley is one of my, my, my best uh, clients, if you will. There's uh -huh. a corporate art consultant that I, that I work with, a couple of them, one on the West Coast, one on the East Coast that have, um, you know, so kindly have, have contacted me to use my photography in their corporate offices. Now I'm actually asked by them to go on locations to shoot so my artwork can be in their offices. We can talk a little bit about that later yeah. too. Yeah. So th those, are the, those are the things that, that get done. Um, luck does pay, play a part. The, the more you apply yourself, the harder you work, the luckier you will get. Yeah. Now listen, also to uh, anyone listening closely and paying attention right now, that it's, it's very important that you, you, you put out your best work, do your follow-up, uh, stay committed okay, to the work, and um, have excellent branding, consistent branding and imaging of what you're doing. People, the people that bought my work know exactly what I do. Okay. I'm a black and white cityscape photographer. Okay. Uh, extraordinary view of the ordinary structures, building, seen in a very different way so that, you know, it became like, well, I'm sure your audience is familiar with Ansel Adams. Uh -huh. And that was something I half-jokingly told myself 25 years ago. I want to be the Ansel Adams of cityscapes. Okay. I want people to know Michael Joseph, oh, the cityscape guy, uh -huh. and the buildings, and, and that's what I okay. aspired to do. I don't now know if how, I did it, but... So, yeah. all right, so you started getting successful yeah. leasing out your work Correct. selling in galleries yeah. interior designers yes so how did you start your own gallery or what's what's this art blend business because art blend art blend um i give full credit to my wife elaine uh, elaine is a um businesswoman business background does not do art does not create art has a complete business mind and um, she was um, uh, coerced into working with me in my career. Uh, my wife asked me like my dad year, years ago, you know, prove the concept. How do I know you're, this is really going to work and this is going to be successful? This photography thing and art and I don't know, come back and show me some numbers and uh, okay, you know, spreadsheets and stuff. But um, honestly, I, I, I spent a good 10 years developing my career and um, those, those successes that we're talking about now, um, you know, did come to the attention of my wife and um, she had been sort of phased out of her career, which was the music business. And the joke in our family is just that she still has her resume out, still looking. And I said, well, come help me, keep your resume out, we'll see how this goes. If it doesn't work, you know, you know that this is gonna be a, a company that's gonna headhunt you and you'll be, you'll be fine and I'll shuffle off into the sunset or something. Or, uh -huh. Um, but today, uh, honestly, Art Blend is a company that uh, happened because the evolution of the success of my career. So it was a component that we haven't talked about, which is showing and exhibiting at major art fairs, okay? So my wife and I started doing that with my career. Okay. Aside from galleries, aside from books and magazines and the internet, there was another way and another vehicle, another component to being discovered and found. And that's the art fair. So we're going to go back to that in a minute. But yeah, we, so we talk a, a lot on the we'll show. We'll talk a lot about that. No, okay. on this show we talk a lot about art fairs oh, because it really is the fastest way. Okay, it is the fastest. It's the way. fastest way to start making money with your art. Absolutely. 
So go yes. ahead. So Elaine uh, and I are working together side by side. Uh, I am being recognized for my accomplishments, the accolades, the successes. And uh, we started to invite some friends of mine to show in our gallery. And then they started to wait, ask. Wait, wait, wait. Yep. Oh, the gallery. Yeah, yeah. You, we we you skipped over. Skipped over that. When did you start the gallery? <laughs> and was it just a gallery? Uh, or? No, no. Yeah, it was Michael Joseph Photography Gallery in Framing. It was a little okay. 500 square foot studio. My wife insisted that all this inventory gets out of the house, and we instead of going to uh, you know into another house, we were getting ready to move. Instead of finding another room in the house, it would just make logical sense that. Uh, we allocate some of that funding and in the investment to opening our first gallery. Okay. Risk reward ratio. So we said, great, I'll, I'll take that risk, let's go. What's, what's our budget? What can we think we can afford? And I think we, uh, we increased it by maybe 20 or 30% over, which was the risk. I didn't want to play it safe. Safe is always just going to be safe. I so wanted you're an saying edge. I can afford thousand yeah. dollars a month, but I'm going to go, go 1500, for twelve hundred. Twelve hundred, fifteen hundred, yeah. absolutely, okay. and that'll okay. come up again later. It'll be the consistent theme in our life together. That I, I'm, uh, you know, constantly doing that. That um, just when you feel comfortable, risk it all, uh. you know, and, uh, or risk a third of it. Uh, truthfully, okay, the, so, so we, we opened up the, the studio and framing across on the other side of town near the railroad tracks. And we started, and we figured framing would be a good way to um, have a component that could add some income to right. just having an art gallery. Okay. It was a, a, yeah, a galleries natural are tough. Uh, relationship. Right. Yeah. So hey, pick up some framing, do some stretching. Um, no problem. We can do that. We didn't have to invest too much in too much inventory or or molding. It was easy to do, um, and we both had jobs. So uh, we. Um, advertised our company, we became known in our town, and we started to develop some business. Uh, but back to um, the, the artist, and opening up the next gallery happened because uh, the artists were asking my wife to manage their careers. Could you manage me like you did Matt Michael? And um, that's important because my wife really wasn't a manager of me, she was an agent. Okay. And that's what Art Blend is. We're an agency. So we changed our name from being a gallery to being an agency. Art Blend um, was the evolution and the progression of multiple companies that we would own over okay, the last so 10 Art, years. So let's Art put it chronologically Blend does together. What? So Art Blend is a gallery. Yes, brick and mortar gallery. And it's. It's a publishing media company, what slash does that mean? multimedia company uh, is the correct term. Multimedia, uh, we do book publishing. We can help artists um, take a body of work, concise body of work, uh, whether it be a, a photo book or, or art or even literature, novels. And we can help them get it all together and get published. Okay. We are, early on we had a publishing company. Um, you know, so we have the, the means and the ways to get books published. Okay. Professionally hardbound, multiple copies, what we call from door to door, from okay. creation to your doorstep, one stop. We can do that. Um, social media networking, making websites, making what we call collateral, which goes back to earlier, having a good business card, a postcard, okay. letterhead, collateral. Okay. So we, we that's the multimedia So you component. have a staff who does yes. like graphic design. Yes, graphic and designers. Yes. And website development. Yes. And, okay. Yes, we have all that. I said 13 or 14. Um, staff members with and what us. A, what's the gallery now the brick and mortar gallery is a real location it's, it's uh, in East Fort Lauderdale right by the beach a 6,500 square foot facility Wow um, we're very very proud of that that was you know many many years to, to build and develop that um, it's uh, we're very proud of it gorgeous facility we represent probably over 40 50 different artists in the gallery at any one time um, the way we show art in our gallery is what we're talking about today. Artists that are already working with us by being published or going to an art fair, which is the third component of our company. So the brick and mortar gallery, the publishing or the multimedia, uh -huh. and then going to the art fairs. Um, as an agency, we work with artists uh, directly. So if there's a show in Miami um, or New York City or the West Coast, uh, we do all the logistics in production work to participate in the show and all we do with the artists is to collect their artwork from them 
and we take their art to the show, we set it up, we curate, we hang, we work the show, wow. we sell their artwork, um, wow. and all they got to do is just get the art to us, now, sent to us in our gallery. Okay, now Break that's that fascinating okay. to me because a, a lot of my audience, they, I say, well, the fastest way is to do the art shows. And well, they don't want to put up a tent, and you know, mm. they're older people, most, a lot of them, and putting up a tent and getting up at four o'clock in the morning to set it all up and sit there for 12 hours, they just don't want to do it. And I don't want to do it either. I've done it in the past I, I too. I don't want to do it either. So these are, you these, do that, Yes. but just for your people that you're representing already. Right, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll digress here for just a minute and I want to be clear that okay. the, the shows that I do, the art fairs that my company participates in are large indoor Art fear, 60,000 right. square foot, you know, it could be over 150, 300 galleries or artists exhibiting in, the, in these shows. Uh, as a reference, uh, there's uh, in Miami next month in December, Spectrum Miami, Red Dart, Scope, uh, Context, Art Basel. It's, uh, you know, it's a large event in Miami. These are not the street festivals with the little white tents and the right, artists individually right. showing with bins. These are uh, what I like to call a higher level um, presentation, art fear, uh, much like you would ex expect to see if you were going to a trade show, an industry trade show. So, and who comes to those shows? Uh, the world at large. Uh, these are, this is uh, international attraction. Uh, okay. A show like Miami is, is international. It's the largest... You're talking about Art Basel? Art Basel, yeah. which is now called Art Miami Art Week because there's, oh. yeah, there's over 25 different art fear shows going on, the Same. reputable ones. I'm not even talking about the satellite ones or the independent ones that are at the, the hotel or the restaurant or the warehouse bay. I'm talking about reputable established art show, art fear trade shows that okay. have been going on for decades that are, that are set up in Miami. Uh, we've, we've sort of become like a freight train all hitching our wagon to the, the parent Art Basel art fear that okay. takes place at the, con the convention center. So that's the granddaddy. Of, 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 of art fairs in, in the U.S., but what's happening in Art Miami now and what's going on in the Wynwood Design District and over at the beach is, is just phenomenal. Uh, you know, anybody that's really, I think, is interested in um, you know, uh, buying art, discovering art, shopping art, being an artist, this is where you have to be. It's, okay. it's what we call critical mass in our industry. It's 35,000 visitors are going to a single art fair. Our company is participating in Spectrum Miami. It's a Redwood Media Group art fair. They also own Red Dot. It's at Mana Wynwood um, in the Wynwood Design District. We've been participating for the last eight years. Uh -huh. We are now the largest single exhibitor partner of the, the show. I have 3,600 something square feet of exhibitor space. You asked me that wow. question. Um, I'm, I'm buying in bulk square footage at the art fair. I build a blueprint with walls, hard walls. We mm -hmm. put them up. The show uh, helps us to organize the lighting and uh, production of it. And uh, as a production coordinator, I design the, 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 and curate the entire show. So in a show like Miami next month, I'll have 85 artists. Wow. exhibiting with us. Wow. Yes. So now the artists, do they have to pay extra? Okay, so gallery is usually straight commission, right? Mm. No? No. So no. if I want to hang my work in your gallery, it costs me money? No. No. It's How? interesting, right? Got okay. your interest peaked. Yeah. I'm, I'm, everybody's leading into their computers at this point. Yeah. Okay, what's, this, what's he going to say? Here, here's how we work. Nuts and bolts, real simple. Uh -huh. Yes, as an agency, much like you would hire a public relations company or a PR firm, uh -huh. we're an agency. We, we get paid a fee to perform our services and keep all the gears greased, right? 13, 14 kids working with me. Everybody's got their job and their detail. So um, what happens is, is we charge a fee to, to be involved with us for me to exhibit your work at the fair. And I can break down the details of how what that happens. Wait, let's yep. back up. Okay. What about just at your gallery? The, the, the gallery, at one time we did have a fee to exhibit in my gallery. Okay, it uh -huh. did operate that, that way for many years. However, the, the, the juncture that we are at today, right where I am sitting with you, it's almost the end of the year. Um, the format we're going to to now 
is that artists that are participating in several art fairs with us, it could be one art fair, but that's a little bit more limited. If you're going to several art fairs with us, we're showing your art in our gallery in the interim. I so see. you're doing oh, a show I in see. Miami in December. Okay. In April, we're going to Art Expo, and you know. So in the interim, it's hanging it. in my gallery. Okay. No charge for you. Um, you know that that's the way we work it. Okay, that you know, sounds like it makes sense. Fair and reasonable, right? Yeah. I mean, we have you know. And so it's, how it's, much does it cost the artist to get? First of all, they have to. You have to judge them or whatever. Somehow you're like, well, this person. We, isn't we like good to enough. use the word vetting. Vetting. Yeah, I don't Thank you. Judging Couldn't artwork. Find a word. <laughs> uh, we, yeah, it, 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 it's it's it's. So it's it's uh, we we know what we are by what we're not. So what am I saying there is there's just you know I, I, I don't like to judge artwork. I, I love art. Um, it's just there's, there's probably a, a small area of artwork that we just don't handle. That's all. Okay. What is all that? Right. I mean you know. So somebody makes email their me, call, me and I'll tell you what it is. Just like you said, they're going to email you yep, after the show. Mm -hmm. Would you look at my website? Yes, I do. And then you'll say, I like this. This lady's got something going on. Yes. So you'll contact her, or yes. you'll respond yes, I, I, to her. Yes, I respond. I reply. And then yes. what? And then what's the next step? So the next step is is we find that we're a match for each other. That we, you know, you, you fit in with uh, the, you know, um, the feeling the, for for Art Blend. Um, then from there, I'm going to uh, reply back with the the details, the finer points of of what it takes to get involved in an art fair. Let's just factually say uh, a sh like, like a show like um, Spectrum Miami or, or Art Expo. Those uh -huh. are the two big shows that our company participates in. Okay. Um, and the, the way that we work in our show, uh, the, the fee to participate can be as little as $1,500 uh -huh. to $8,500. Okay, in, in and between. so how many pieces or does that depend that depends. also? Or? Uh, for $1,500 you're looking at I'm looking over your shoulder because that's about a four foot wide by ten foot high wall. Okay. So it's based on linear feet. Okay. Or not so much square feet. It's linear feet. So uh, four feet wide, ten feet high. Um, you know, it's it's relative to the size of your artwork, how much you can fit. Now, as a curator and as a professional, um, you know, I, I have experience at putting together a show and a successful show. Less is always more in a big art fair like that. So you're not trying to just fill up the wall with as right. many pictures as you can. You want to show your best work, your most important work. Slightly larger works uh, have the most impact in their visual f from a distance. Okay. They can be seen from 50 feet or 60 feet away. Because when you're walking in art fair, people, if you notice, they're walking the corridors, they're walking the lanes. Yeah. And their heads are cocking left and right and they're looking and looking. And you sort of just have to make an immediate connection. You have to make a love connection. Oh, I like blondes, great, connection. there she is. I'm going, <laughs> I'm going over there. So art is the same way. It has to be, oh, wow, look at that sunset. Look at that beautiful black and white building. I'm, I'm looking for, you know, so that's what has to be. There has to be that allure. Uh, my dad and I were talking earlier, and it's like, right, I love sailboats or Corvettes, you know, and boom, he's there. He's, he's appreciating it. He's already uh, infatuated with it coming in. He's going to engage. He's going to ask, start asking questions. You've, you've pre-qualified him. And the next thing you've got to do, or my job is, is to sell him that photograph. Okay. So I said, as a full-service art agency, that's what we're set up to do. So $1,500, $1,800, four-foot wall, depends on the show. And now and you can get up to uh, what we like to call feature artist sections, where you have three 10-foot walls. You have like a, a cube space and you have a featured section where you're highlighted in my show um, you have you know 32 something linear feet 30 linear feet okay. um, and with that comes more incentives of more perks of course right you're investing more what happens at that level you're, you're spending you know 65 to 8500 dollars but you, you, you there's you know we have your name up on the wall uh, we give your name to the public relations company that's handling the show. Uh, maybe they're going to do something additional in marketing for you. Okay. They may do some video interview at the show, uh, some advanced in interviews for you at the show. Um, and we're the liaison for all that. We help them put that all together. Um, we also invite the artist to be present at the show at their, at their section. Maybe they have a book or some brochures or a catalog or something. We in, invite them to have that there. The, the artists that are taking the single walls, obviously with 65, 85 artists, 
I, I can't have everybody having all that extra material there. It would right, sort of right. look like a flea Water market. Water it down. Water yeah. it down, right. Yeah. So, so now, do you take a commission on top of that? We don't. No. We, we, we take, from, from art sales, we take no commission. So our, when the artist pays us our fee up front, uh -huh. that is our fee. Okay. And the way we work the fee, and with full disclosure and transparency, we're really working for about 15%, which is respectable for any agent in any industry. Right. Entertainment industry, music, arts, an agent should be working for 10 to 15%. I mean, if you're doing you know, something phenomenal for you, 20%. Uh, a manager may take 15, 25, or 30 percent. But again, I'm not a manager, I'm an agent. Okay. What an agent is doing is, is bringing you opportunities. Okay. okay. So you have the yay or the nay or the veto, if, if you will, to decide if it's right for you. Okay. Uh, if, so if, I'm, if I look at your website and I invite you to an art fair and say, yes, you're for me, would you like to go to this show? Or I have a marketing opportunity for you. I'm, I'm bringing opportunities for you. And that's it. I'm making uh, a relationship. So we get paid that way. We go to work. The gears are greased. Everybody is working on you. And that's it. But the best upside of the whole thing is, which is even if it's your investment into the show, you're still making 100% of your art sale. That's awesome. At all time, in my gallery or at the art fair. That's so even if you were trying to do it on your own and sell for yourself, the chances are, and I know this for a fact, you're going to spend 10, 20 times more trying to do a show by yourself than if you come with a company like that's me. That's fascinating. Now, where can, yes. tell, tell us how to, because uh, where the clock where, on the wall where says they, where, where can they get yeah, a hold of you and what, okay, tell we, us, and where can they see your images and all that kind of stuff. We discussed a lot of stuff today, real fast. Right? I know. Um, art Blend is the company. I, so I is mentioned it my, my wife and I own Art Blend. Uh, we're in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. www.artbland.com. Okay. okay Artblend.com. Uh, my personal email, fine, you can flood my email box, mj at artblend.com. Okay. Email me direct. What about your artwork? Where do we see that? Michaeljoseph.com. Michaeljoseph.com. How, how, how convenient, right? <laughs> M-I-C-H-A-E-L-Joseph.com. Um, and I'm mj at michaeljoseph.com. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry we didn't get to share more stories together. I know. I I, you gotta, you're going to have to come back for sure. If you would have me. I would have Would you have my dad sure. come back with us too? Dad, maybe we'll get your dad on the show next <laughs> time. Get, you know, dad, he can tell you some stories. Uh, but, this, uh, hey, you know, I'm, I'm available. Uh, next couple of weeks is going to be real busy putting Miami together. Obviously. Anybody listening that's, you know. When I'm is gonna, Art Basel? Uh, Art, uh, Spectrum Miami, Art Miami Week, uh, December 4th through 7th. Okay, now you can find me. Art Blend at SpectrumMiami.com, okay. and uh, we are Art Blend. We are booth 105 and 108. We're right at the front of the show. Um, come over, say hello. Uh, don't jam on me with a portfolio or an iPad or no, anything. You're there ask. to sell. I'm there to work. Right, I'm there to sell for the artists that have already contracted yeah. with me to be representing them and be talking about them. But I, but I'm, you know, I'm, 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 uh, I'm available. You mentioned you, you know, that you heard me on the show. We'll, we'll be cordial and say hello. But uh, yeah, th that's what we talked about earlier. There's a time and place for everything. And yeah. so don't, at the show, don't say hello. Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Michael Joseph, thank for you being for on the me. show. Appreciate it. And um, join us next week for episode 115. We're going to talk with flower photographer Kathleen Clemens, who's also really into lens babies. So we're, we're going to talk quite a bit about that. I'm Peggy Farron. Thank you for watching the Understand Photography Show. Remember, our show notes are at understandphotography.com.